Here's a novel idea. Rather than simply dismissing any criticisms of the casting of Jodie Whittaker as the 13th Doctor as mere misogyny, how about taking a more objective approach? Unfortunately, cries of misogyny have become a common method for dismissing criticisms of ideas that are simply bad or not properly thought out. Before I proceed, however, I will do what I've done in every video I've made on this subject, which is state my opinion on the 13th Doctor. I do not have a problem with the gender. My concern is with the possible ideological motivations behind this decision. I'm concerned that it was not done for the right reasons. This is just a short video expressing some of my concerns about new showrunner Chris Chibnall. This is not intended as an attack on the man, just an attempt to take an objective look at where he might take the show. This is all supposition, of course, but when we look at some of the evidence at hand, a picture does start to emerge. In some ways, we can compare this to the 2016 Ghostbusters movie. Anyone who takes a look at this film with any degree of objectivity should be able to see that it is simply a bad movie. The acting is bad, the jokes are terrible, the script is ridiculous, and the effects and CGI are incredibly weak. A major problem, however, is that whenever any criticism was leveled at the movie, it was written off by director Paul Feig as misogyny. He was unwilling to admit that he had messed up, and this became his fallback position. Feig had been given the reins to a beloved franchise and decided to make his own ideological views the central focus. He wanted to make a feminist picture, and everything else seemed to be secondary. The results were horrible. Now, I'm not pretending that Doctor Who and the 2016 Ghostbusters disaster are the same thing. They are very different. But I think we do have legitimate reasons for thinking that ideology might come first. Beyond ideology, I think we can also ask ourselves if Chibnall was really the best choice for the monumental task of running a show as noteworthy as Doctor Who. In short, we need to take a look at the man who made this casting decision, and I think there are some legitimate criticisms to be made. Chibnall was handed the reins to one of the biggest science fiction institutions in history and has decided to take a monumental risk. What are his reasons for doing this? Well, we don't really know because he still has not addressed any criticisms. The only thing he said is that he wanted to cast a female in the role from the beginning. Doing something for the sake of doing it is rarely a good thing. I mean, remember Ghostbusters. Were all the potential scenarios really considered in making this choice? Has he really considered the ramifications if this decision backfires? The show could very easily go down as a result of this decision if it's not handled properly, and from what we've seen so far, it isn't being handled properly. It has already split the fan base of a show that was already in major trouble. Not addressing the issues directly, in some ways, can lead some Doctor Who fans to question his competence as showrunner. He has shied away from a large portion of Doctor Who fandom and instead has let others take on the argument, which, I guess, is the opposite to the approach taken by Paul Feig, but the results could still be the same. Both Russell T. Davies and Stephen Moffat and many former Doctor Who actors have made their thoughts on this very clear. As for Doctor Who fandom, well, it seems to be getting more and more toxic by the day. There are some segments of fandom that deify Whitaker and Chibnall with very little reason for doing so. Please clarify your reasons for doing so. Sure, both have their good and bad points, but they're not exactly the second coming. Any criticism of either of them is seen as blasphemy, whether it's potentially warranted or not. Sorry, folks, but nothing is ever perfect, and yes, everything is open for criticism. People are not misogynist bigots for having an opinion that differs from yours. Firstly, let's look at Chibnall's Doctor Who episodes and compare them with those written by Stephen Moffat before taking on the role as showrunner. Regardless of what many of us may think of him at the end of his run, he was by far the strongest writer during the Russell T. Davies era. His list of credits during that era read like a fan-favorite list of New Who episodes. The Empty Child, The Doctor Dances, The Girl in the Fireplace, Blink, Silence in the Library, and Forest of the Dead. Like it or not, these stories had a fundamental impact on the success of Doctor Who in the 21st century, and there was, justifiably, sufficient reason for excitement when he was announced as showrunner. Now to contrast, do we really have as much reason to be excited about Chibnall in 2017 as we did with Moffat in 2009? Well, not really. As a start, let's look at Chibnall's Doctor Who writing history. 42, The Hungry Earth, Cold Blood, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, and The Power of Three. Opinions are often subjective, but I don't really view any of these as being classic stories. They range from poor to mediocre to average at best. 
to his credit, his contributions to Torchwood did fare somewhat better, but I think we need to focus on the stories he penned for the show that he now finds himself at the helm of. I'm sorry, but he does not have the resume of Stephen Moffat, whose previous shows also include the brilliant Jekyll and Sherlock, although yes, it did have problems, particularly near the end. I think when we are talking motivation, we need to look at Chibnall's other show, Broadchurch, which ran for three series on ITV. Yes, the first season was good, but there has also been a running theme throughout the show. Can we really watch this show without thinking that it is just a bit misandrist? On some levels, it could actually be called Toxic Masculinity in Dramatic Perspective. I will be devoting an entire video to this, but I think it's important to bring it up here. All the male characters are deeply flawed and some are almost caricatures. They are portrayed as the villains while the female characters are the victims. I'm not necessarily saying that Broadchurch is a terrible show, but you can't really deny that there is a definite trend here. This also speaks to Chibnall's mindset and motivations. Past behaviors are not a definite determinant of future behaviors, but they could always influence them. I think one must wonder what the purpose of Bradley Walsh is in Series 11. Am I the only one that thinks that there is a distinct possibility that he is meant to represent the evil white male patriarchy? I really hope my fears are unfounded here, but then again, we have to look at precedent. We can also take an objective look at his choice outside the confines of the gender debate. If he wanted to go with the female doctor, was Jodie Whittaker really the best choice? She's good at what she's done in the past, but as I've said before, she doesn't, in my opinion, have the presence to play the doctor. There are other female actors that do, Olivia Colman or Hayley Atwell, for example. There is also the fact that this may have been a safe choice for Chibnall because this was an actor that he had already worked with. To me, this seems a bit like not thinking outside the box, as much as I hate that expression. In closing, for many Doctor Who fans, Chris Chibnall has yet to prove himself. If he intends on doing something narratively interesting with the show, then I'm all for it. If, however, he intends to use the show as a platform to spread his personal ideological beliefs, then he will have done a great disservice to a British institution. As I keep saying, all the concerns many of us are having about the future of Doctor Who could very well be unfounded. We could be proven wrong, and Series 11 could be brilliant. Only time will tell. And that's it for today. As always, everyone, thank you for watching, and have a good day.